What's going on guys? Thank you for tuning in and I hope you're doing well. In today's episode, I'm going on my first proper toy hunt of 2023 and I'm really excited. So I'm out at Jamison Town in Western Sydney and we're going to go check out second childhood toys and collectibles. Now I've I'm not quite sure what to expect because I've never been here before, but I know that Kyle from Second Childhood sells a lot of vintage toys as well as modern toys because I see him at a lot of toy fairs. Kyle also does a lot of his selling online, and here where we're going to, Kyle's warehouse is where he fulfills a lot of his online orders. So I'm really excited to go check it out. Now, I'm not flying solo. I'm here with Matt from Keep On Collecting, who you can see walking past the car, and also Andrew, and also the Taylors from Totally Taylor Retro Hunters on Instagram. Now, those guys actually came here and checked out Second Childhood about a month ago, and they said it was awesome. They said there's a lot of tubs to dig through and find loose accessories, which I'm really excited about. It sounds right up my alley. So let's get in there, let's have a wander, see what we can find, and I'll show you around. Let's do it. So as you can see, Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles is huge. It's an industrial unit, so it's essentially a warehouse chock full wall to wall of all sorts of different toys and collectibles. Like I mentioned in the intro, a lot of modern releases. So if you're the type of collector that loves your modern TMNT figures or G.I. Joe or DC Universe figures, Cole had a ton of stuff that's gonna be right up your alley. Obviously, I collect strictly vintage action figures, but the vintage toys were definitely there. You just had to go digging a little bit. But to me, that's part of the fun. And when I first went into Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles, I was honestly a little bit overwhelmed, the size of it, the layout, the fact that I'd never been before. I, I really didn't know where to start. But once I got my bearings, my first order of business today was digging through a big tub of vintage TMNT accessories. And I was there with Dean, Dean from Totally Taylor Retro Hunters, and we had a good old dig. We took our time sifting through this big tub of accessories. Dean had a list of some parts he was looking for. I know the parts that I'm looking for to complete the existing figures that I have in my line. So we just went through it, taking our time piece by piece, and we both absolutely scored. We found a ton of cool parts. So just digging through all the TMNT loose yeah. figures and accessories, I've had some success right off the bat. So we've got the last Ace Duck grenade that I needed to complete him. So 89 is complete. And a couple of these little elusive April O'Neil accessories, her Ninja Star and her microphone. Uh, and then over here, we have a busted up April with her pistol. So in one little sweep of this tub, I've managed to complete not only 1988 because of these April accessories, but also 1989 because of this Ace Duck. Happy days. The hunt continues. So as you can see, I essentially got myself an April O'Neil figure from 1988 with every piece that I needed to complete my version. This April is in as rough shape as you'll ever find an April O'Neil figure. She's been torn limb from limb. I have no idea what's going on there. But she had all the parts that I needed to complete my own April O'Neil figure. So we've got her microphone, we've got her pistol, and we've got her ninja star. So that's awesome. Right off the bat, not only am I able to complete my 1988 April O'Neil, but that means I'm able to complete my 1988 line full stop. So 88 is ticked off, which is awesome. I also managed to pick up that 
ace duck grenade, the last grenade I needed to complete my ace duck, which is already up there in ace duck's little bandolier. And that means 1989's complete. So success right off the bat. And the other part that you would have seen uh, during the footage of me sifting through those TMNT accessories was the little sewer cap that I needed to complete my childhood TMNT sewer cycle from 1989. So the day was off to a cracking start and we'd been there for about half an hour at that point. And next up, sifting through a tub of mixed loose vintage action figures, I stumbled across this guy. We've got the Storm Toad Trooper from the 1990 Hasbro Bucky O'Hare line. Now, I'm slowly but surely piecing together the small line of Bucky O'Hare figures. I still need a bunch of accessories and I'm gonna need an accessory for this guy right here because he is loose with no weapons. But the figure itself is in decent condition. So I was really happy to be able to walk away with a new figure for the Bucky O'Hare collection. We've got the Storm Toad Trooper and I think this guy is the army build of the Bucky O'Hare line. So stoked to get my hands on this guy. So as you can probably tell by now, one of the unique things about second childhood toys and collectibles is that particularly when it comes to the vintage toys, it's not curated. It's not like every part is married up with each figure and they're displayed behind glass cabinets. It's lots and lots of tubs of sorted accessories, so sorted by toy line, but just as many tubs of completely mixed loose accessories that you could spend all day with Google Lens trying to identify and trying to work out what goes with what. And that was a challenging part of today's hunt, but that was also one of the joys of today's hunt. Uh, Dean and Andrew and Matt, myself, we, we were just bouncing off one another and just going through a lot of different accessories, trying to work out what's what and trying to identify some diamonds in the rough in terms of those loose pieces that we needed for our respective vintage lines. And just going through some mixed tubs, I managed to pick up a couple of pieces that uh, I do in fact need for some of my vintage lines. So right here, I've got a pretty nondescript belt accessory, but I've been able to identify it as an ammunition belt from the Dick Tracy line. I believe this went with either flat top or prune face. I believe both of those characters came with the actual ammunition belt. Now I've checked it for size on prune face and it does fit over his shoulder as, as it should. So I'm almost certain that this is indeed a Dick Tracy accessory. I also picked up a crossbow accessory for the uh, 1991 Kenner Robin Hood Prince of Thieves line. I've got my crossbow Robin Hood complete, but I believe Will Scarlet also came with the crossbow. So I believe I needed this guy. So stoked to have another crossbow for the Robin Hood collection. And how about this guy? We've got the studded sewer ball from the 
uh, TMNT 1989 sewer playset. I don't have the sewer playset in the collection, but I came across this. None of the other boys needed it, and Dean from Totally Taylor Retro Hunter said, hey, listen, if, if you get your hands on a sewer playset, which I, I'm on the hunt for, uh, it's only a matter of time before I pull the trigger on one of those. Often this accessory is missing. It's not one of the easier to find accessories, so I thought, why not add that to the collection for now? So we've got him. So as you can see, uh, it's a time consuming process, but we're having an absolute ball digging through uh, some mixed accessories. And not only me, the other guys were having some top finds as well. Now Kyle, being the legend that he is, actually took the time before we arrived to dig out a whole bunch of smaller tubs of all different parts and pieces sorted by toy line, mostly vintage, but also some modern stuff thrown in there as well. So I'm talking like 15 or 20 different tubs of things like Crash Dummies and Mighty Max and Ghostbusters, Jurassic Park, some Game Boy stuff, some monsters in my pocket. And it was at this point in the day that I turned my attention to going through a lot of those smaller tubs. Some of them just have a bit of a squiz at what's there, but other ones to see if I could find some hidden treasure for my different collections. And I found a couple of cool pieces. So I was stoked to see a tub dedicated to monster in my pocket figures. I love monster in my pocket. Uh, they were a big part of my childhood and some of my few childhood survivors these days are actually monsters in my pocket. And from that childhood collection, along with a few that I've picked up since, you know, since I started collecting a few years ago, there's only probably four or five figures that I need to complete that first wave. So my focus with monsters in my pocket is not picking up any of the later waves, but just, you know, trying to complete the childhood collection of those first 48 monsters. And I managed to find one. We've got Rock, again, monsters in my pocket, 1990. This was, I guess, the Neon sub-series. So another really cool one to add to the childhood monsters in my pocket collection. And I was also stoked to be able to have a bit of a dig through some mixed McDonald's toys, a lot of Disney stuff, some Muppet Babies, odds and ends. And I've got some loose Muppet Babies, incomplete Happy Meal toys from I believe 1986, 1987. And I don't have the vehicles to go with them. It's, it's really weird. I, you know, I got a Kermit and a Miss Piggy and a, and a Gonzo and an animal, but without the vehicles. And I managed to find just this loose Miss Piggy car to be able to complete that one. So I can get Miss Piggy into a car and I can display her next to the sealed Kermit on his skateboard that Matt picked up for me when we went to Melbourne last year. So this was a fun little pickup to finish the hunt. So at this point we had about 30 minutes before Kyle had to shut up shop. So I, I kind of abandoned the hunt and I just wanted to make sure that I was using the time that I had to film a bit of a look around the store as best I can to give you guys an idea of just how much cool stuff Kyle has on offer. And there is just so much stuff there that I don't personally collect but I think is incredible. Kyle had a huge selection of comic books, uh, lots of framed posters and, and all sorts of framed art. Like I mentioned, tons of modern toys, action figures, and other modern collectibles. Uh, all sorts of things. I, I saw a bunch of different items that I can see myself going back for. Kyle had 
uh, box of vintage McDonald's plates, which again is, is pretty far removed from what I collect, but I just found them so cool to go through those McDonald's plates and had a look. Kyle also had some pieces from a line that I've thought about getting into, but I, I haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. And I'm talking about vintage Lego. He had some incredible vintage Lego on display, including a couple of smaller Pirates Lego sets from, I would imagine, the early 90s that I would love to one day get into. But, you know, Lego is just a, a whole other rabbit hole, especially vintage Lego. Um, so there was just so much there to see. And uh, like I said, I did run into some co time constraints, but I hope I've given you guys a, a good idea of all the sorts of cool stuff that's on offer at Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles. And as the boys were paying for the items that they picked up today, I took one last sweep of the store and I came across an awesome selection of vintage wax pack trading cards and foil pack trading cards. And obviously this isn't a staple of my collection, but they are super nostalgic to me. I've got tons of amazing memories of picking up trading cards from the video store and the news agency back in the day and trading them at school with friends. And I like the idea of having at least one pack of trading cards that correspond with each of the vintage toy lines that I collect. So the ones that I picked up today, Robin Hood Prince of Thieves, a sealed Robin Hood Prince of Thieves pack to display with the Kenner action figures. I picked up a sealed Dick Tracy wax pack. And then if you saw my recent Christmas haul video where the seller of a, a bunch of items uh, that I picked up from eBay threw in some Skeleton Warriors loose flare trading cards, which are beautiful, I couldn't knock back the opportunity to pick up a sealed Skeleton Warriors foil pack of cards. These cards are incredible. So these are just sealed packs that will display with the action figures that I have for each of these lines. And at this point in time, we'll, we'll, we'll stay sealed and just display there with those action figures beautifully. And that concludes my pickups from Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles. Once again, today was a ton of fun. It's always awesome to get out on the hunt with my mates Matt and Andrew from Keep On Collecting. My mate Dean from Totally Taylor Retro Hunters was there. Like I mentioned, Dean collects a lot of the same sort of stuff I do. So we had a good time today going through a lot of the different uh, tubs of accessories and loose parts together and having a great time. And I can't forget Dean's dad, Stan, who is often along for the hunt and he's just a wealth of knowledge and a great bloke to hang out with as well. So shout out to Stan. Now, as always, toy hunting with legends like Matt and Andrew and Dean always means some extra goodies getting shared around. So I've got to share those with you while we're here. First up, I've got these two absolute gems, a couple of carded Cadillacs and Dinosaurs figures. Now, I'm, I am going to show these off in more detail in a dedicated Cadillacs and Dinosaurs video that's coming up very shortly. Uh, but Dean actually picked up these two carded Cadillacs and Dinosaurs figures on a Toytacular Facebook auction. I wasn't around at the time. Dean knows that I'm collecting these. They're an absolute steal. Big thanks to Phil at Toytacular. So Dean stepped in and grabbed these for me and checked if I wanted them. And of course I did, so I fixed Dean up. But I am super stoked to have these at the price that I picked them up. So thank you very much to Dean. Thank you very much to Phil. Shout out Toytacular. And we'll have a look at those in a little bit more detail in a video that's going to be coming up very shortly. And the Taylors also hooked me up with this awesome Ring Raiders mini comic. This thing is sick. You've got a catalogue of all the different items in the line on one side and the other side is like an origin story mini comic with beautiful art and this is incredible. I've actually got a couple of these but in sealed Ring Raiders items so I don't have one loose. I've never been able to actually dig this out and, and have a look at the artwork obviously since I was a kid when I was ripping Ring Raiders off blister packs. So I'm really stoked to have this little uh, insert from a, a Ring Raiders carded set. So big thanks to Dean and Stan for that. That's incredible. And of course the boys from Keep On Collecting just keep on giving. Matt surprised me with this Skeleton Warriors Ursac figure. He is complete. He's got his rifle with his projectile, his blaster, and he also has his axe accessory. And he's also got his little skeleton finder accessory, which is Unbelievable. Now the story behind this complete Ursac figure is Carl from Retro Cartel Collectibles who I mentioned in my last video. Carl reached out to me a little while ago with a carded Ursac figure and said, hey, you know, are you interested? It was a great price. But 
I can't seem to wrap my head around opening up vintage mint on card figures and I said to Carl look it's it's you know it's gonna be lost on me I'm not gonna be able to open it so best to sell it to a mint on card collector Matt being the absolute legend that he is bought the thing busted it off the card and sent it to me loose and card fresh which is just unbelievable um, I, I don't even know what to say I'm, I'm beyond grateful but what I will say is Carl if you're watching this mate next time Matt and Andrew Matt or Andrew or both of them are chatting with you about you know buying some pieces from you for their collection please send me the bill or tell them it's not available tell them you've sold it to someone else and sell it to me because I definitely want to support Carl and Retro Cartel Collectibles and I definitely want to go some way to you know paying these guys back I was able to buy them lunch and a few beers today but uh, there's so much more I need to do to to even things up there so Carl please keep me posted if those boys are browsing any items that you've got currently on offer and let me let me pay the tab now, Andrew also hooked me up with some incredible pieces. We've got the VHS tape of Attack of the Killer Tomatoes, which is just incredible. On a recent live stream that I did with Matt, where we were counting down our top five pickups of 2022, I was talking about how much I was loving a, a, a carded and a loose Mattel Attack of the Killer Tomatoes figures that I picked up from Lobos Collectibles when we went to Melbourne last year. And I said that, hey, listen, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on a VHS tape to display with those figures. Well, Andrew's gone and bought it for me, which, I mean, he's just, he's beat me to it. This was on eBay, it was a, it was a pretty cheap price, but I'm still super grateful that Andrew would even think of doing that for me. So big thanks to Andrew for the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes VHS tape, that's incredible. And speaking of live streams, you may recall our special edition of the Collector's Pack live stream, where we hosted Jennifer Runyon from Ghostbusters and Charles in Charge and Carnosaur and a whole bunch of other film and TV credits as a special guest on the stream. Well, how cool is this? Jen sent some signed items for us. So I've got a classic Zena card. You may recall Jen's famous scene with Bill Murray in Ghostbusters where she's trying to guess the Zena card. So I've got a signed Zena card to Scott Jennifer Runyon. How cool is this? I've got a VHS cover. Now, I don't know if she had this or if probably more likely Matt took this from his own collection and sent it to her to be signed because he knows I love old VHS. Blue DeVille, a film that I haven't seen before, signed to Scott. Much love from Jennifer Runyon. That is incredible. And then we've got the classic headshot. For anyone who can't recall Jen Runyon in Ghostbusters, that should refresh your memory from the classic scene with Bill Murray. To Scott, I swear they're just coming to me. Signed Jen Runyon, that is just incredible. So amazing to get some goodies signed by Jen and they're gonna be displayed proudly in the collection. How about this? The, this was a pickup from the Canberra Vintage and Collectible Center. Uh, Matt and Andrew went and did a toy hunt in Canberra at the very start of the year. Unfortunately, I was already back at work, so I wasn't able to join them, but those boys picked up this. So we've got a real Ghostbusters book. It's called Bust, Bustin' Down Under, and it's one of these awesome stories that have your name in it. Like at the, at the you know, in the opening page of the book, it's got from Mum and Dad, 1987, Shane Smith in Bustin' Down Under. And this is just incredible. It's late on a dark and storm-torn afternoon. The wind howls and whistles. The rain beats and pounds upon the roof of 146 Camden Street. I won't say the, the suburb, just in case uh, Shane Smith still lives there, but this is incredible. I had one or two of these as a kid. You pick what you're into. It might be Turtles, it might be Jurassic Park. You give them your name, the names of your two best mates, your address, and, and, and it's woven into an incredible story. So this is... What an amazing relic. Shout out Shane Smith. Appreciate you, mate. And how about this? We've got the X-Rental Home Alone laser disc. Look at that. Civic Video, $4 for three nights. I, I obviously know about LaserDisc. I, I was around when LaserDisc was a thing, but none of my local video stores ever had LaserDisc. I didn't know that rental LaserDisc was even a thing. But this is unbelievable. Now, on the back wall of the collection room, I've actually got some vintage cinema posters framed and on the wall, and they look incredible, but they're, they're set at a height that they don't allow me to put more details on the back wall. So my plan is to actually have like a, you know, a, a cube bookcase next to my childhood CRT TV on the TV stand, which is there. 
um, because obviously the bookcase is lower than Detolf's, so that means the posters sit behind. And the center poster is an original Australian Daybill cinema poster for Home Alone. So the plan is that this will sit on the bookcase below the original uh, Aussie Daybill cinema poster. So we've got the original run Australian cinema poster and then we've got the X rental laser disc for Home Alone. So that is incredible. And last but not least, last time uh, Matt and Andrew were at Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles, I mentioned at the very start of the video that those boys checked out Second Childhood about a month ago. Andrew picked up a loose accessory for me. It is a Toxic Crusaders accessory. It's for the Turf Surfer. Now, I don't have the Turf Surfer. Uh, I, I, I'm keen to get it. It's, it's absolutely on the list. But Andrew saw this, recognized it as a Toxic Crusaders accessory and grabbed that for me for when it comes time to pick up inevitably an incomplete Turf Surfer and I'm one piece closer to completing it. So that is absolutely incredible. Huge, huge thanks as always to Matt, to Andrew, and also to Dean. And like I said, Carl from Retro Cartel, if you're watching, next time those boys are chatting with you about picking up some pieces, definitely send me the bill because those guys continue to look after me. I scrambled to pay the bill when we went and had some lunch and a couple of beers today because that's the least I can do, but I've got a long way to keep going forward to square things up with those guys. I know no one keeps score. It's it's all about friendship and it's all about this awesome collector community and helping one another. Uh, but any opportunity to help those guys, I will absolutely take advantage. But guys, that is it for today's hunt. So I'm gonna wind it up there. Before I do, definitely go check out Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles on Facebook check out their eBay store. I'll include a link to all of those in the description below. Now, Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles is not necessarily open to the public at all times, but the warehouse is there to pick up orders or to go on an appointment basis. So definitely check out Kyle's Facebook and his eBay store and reach out to him if you're in the area and you wanna go and have a browse at Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles. And I'm sure Kyle will make that happen for you. Like I said, I'll include all the details down in the description, but go check out, go support Kyle at Second Childhood Toys and Collectibles. If you're in the Sydney area and you go to collector cons, or the Hurstville Toy Fair, I believe as well. Definitely keep an eye out for Kyle's table and say good day to him for me. Also, make sure you go check out Totally Taylor Retro Hunters on Instagram. As always, go check out and show some love to Matt and Andrew from Keep On Collecting on YouTube or also on Instagram. That'll do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've made it this far, you're a dead set champion. I hope to hear from you in the comments. As always, you can hit us up for a chinwag on Instagram at Crusher Collects. And with all that said, I'm gonna raise one of these and I'm gonna sit on that couch and enjoy a few more. So I will say to you guys until the next one, cheers.